Uh, let's jump over to the next one. Uh, which one do we want to jump over to? In the land? Yeah, in the land. In the land of Leodow. So you watched uh, the second episode as well. How yep. was that? You know, Well, first, let's just kind of talk about the series. Uh, well, you know, So I expressed concerns to you privately about like the possible direction of the show without you know going into yeah. it. Did episode two, is my suspicions kind of correct, or are we going to kind of explore that a little bit? No, your suspicions are actually pretty quite correct, and I'm, I'm actually fine with that because every now and again, I just enjoy having a nice feel good um, anime slice of life. Forget all the drama, forget all the action. We're just going to peace and chill. <laughs> All right, I can respect that. So with this series, it immediately starts off like where you see like a city. Uh, it's the middle of a mm-hmm. thunderstorm. Uh, thunderstorm, you know, you know, naturally sometimes lose power. Yep. Uh, you see power lost. You hear like a hospital monitor uh, just kind of go obviously flatline. Flatline. Uh, and then after that, the next thing you have is our main character waking up in a Leo. Little, little girl f- whose parents on the ends waking up. This. This. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know, when the, you know, when she awakes, you know, it's just kind of like a huge shock about where she is, what's happening. Uh, because you know, the last thing that she knew is that she was in the hospital. Yep. Uh, so she is in this, uh, she is in a, you know, a VR game, uh, named, uh, is the, is the name just, uh, Le- Leodale? Is yes, that the Leodale. name? That is the, okay. I just want to make sure that is the name of the game for sure. And, you know, her waking up, you know, she's, you know, remembering, she's like, you know, I was in the hospital, you know, and then she's looking around and noticing how, like, different things are in the game and just, di- like, different, because, like, it, you know, she notices, like, you know, it's it's told to her, like, oh, there's not seven countries and stuff like that, you know, which is yeah. what she remembers. You know, there's only three and just everything, just a huge culture shock. And during that scene, she comes to find out that it's apparently been 200 years in the game. Yep. So not only did she, her mind get jacked into the game, it seems that, it's jumped her 200 years in the game. Yep. So pretty much just tons of stuff has happened. Yeah, because, like, in, in her in her impression, she doesn't actually know what's the state of her. She, like, yeah. she She's like, did I die? Did my mind, I guess my mind got into the game, but, like, what about my body? Am I dead? Yeah. Like, what happened in the real world? Like, yeah, she sort of thinks about it and everything, but she soon just... Sort of accepts it and try and puts it back, back for mind to enjoy this new world she's been dropped into. Yeah, because see, that was my concern that I expressed to Zach privately is after watching episode one, I just felt like the kind of just from the description of the show that I read, you know, like the general synopsis and just from the vibe I got in episode one, I was just like, I'm afraid that we're not going to actually get to find out if she's dead and what like you know, how she got into the game, you know, I, I'm, I was afraid that we're not going to find that out. So, well, I think we might still, because in the first episode, she does reference trying to find other players. Yep. So she is at least in some form or fashion looking for other players. And in episode two, it actually references some event that happened 200 years ago, which is probably when the power search happened yep. and flatlined her which apparently caused some sort of state within the game, changing it from just a game into a form of reality Mm -hmm. for her and then all the NPCs. Now, you know, just talking about the the show itself, though, I will say I did, I you know, what you're saying with like the slice of life and vibes. So I think I did enjoy a lot of the just general commentary of the show. You know, I thought I enjoyed the comedy of the episode. You know, I, I my favorite part was whenever she was talking about trying to find that silver tower, and it's like, oh, that belongs to like the witch of the silver ring. ring or whatever, and she freaks out, it's like, oh, that cringy ass name is still around. <laughs> she's like, even 200 <laughs> years, I'm still stuck with this nickname. Yeah, she's like, I'm still stuck with the nickname that I made up for myself because she's like a super super OP fucking witch. I don't know if she made it up for herself because what it showed was a shot of her with some silver artifact around her. And pretty much what I got from the second episode, because she goes to the Capitol and she actually meets her children or okay. one of her children. And, but it does show all three of her children. And it sort of references that she may have sacked an entire player city by herself. Oh, <laughs> So I mean, episode one did kind of lay down the law <laughs> that she is very fucking strong. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, she was sort of became more. It seems like that nickname came from the other players rather than herself. Okay. Uh, now we haven't actually got to see like any sort of like 
level scaling about how everyone is kind of is nor what's normal and whatnot but like her level's like like 1100 something her, her, like she's busted yeah her level is 1100 and then actually during the first episode when she's looking at her children's character screens they're all like in the 300s okay which also the children thing was really funny so for the children thing like when she went when she actually got back to her tower and visiting the tower she went up to the top and like visiting like the I guess the guardian of the yeah. tower powered her, powered it back up. Whatever the guardian's just like, oh, by the way, what what's the child's name? They said, do you remember? I can't remember, but he's a elf priest. All right, we're just gonna call him Jim. So anyway, the tower's just like, by the way, Jim came about fifty years ago, and she has no idea who the, who this kid is. She's like, who is that again? It's like, oh, that's your son. And she's like, my my what? what? <laughs> <laughs> and then she's just like thinking about it. She's like, oh, oh yeah, there was that adoption system in the game, wasn't there? Yeah, the fostering system. <laughs> yeah, the fostering and then, system. And the door's just like, what? <laughs> because apparently all the NPCs came sentient at that of power search thing and none of them have any reference for any of the game mechanics. Yep. They all can recognize her skill and power and whatnot, but they don't recognize the actual game mechanics themselves. Right. And one thing that I am uh, interested to see more about is, you know, we've already got some teases about it is like what exactly happened in these 200 years that changed uh, such a massive uh, shift in the land where it went from seven countries or seven nations, whatever, down to three. That's one. That's something I am kind of excited to see more. Uh, explored well, on. it actually does slightly explain it in the second episode because more or less she wakes up to. um was that it? Yeah, no. Because the last episode ended with uh, some people trying to break into her room to steal her crap and led to her lightning tiger thing chasing him away. And she continues to sleep. And the next episode, she wakes up to a commotion. A caravan gets attacked. And she meets a merchant guy who's leading the caravan. And he sort of helps explain some of the things that happened that give her answers, like finding out that more or less when the event from 200 years happened, the people realized something was wrong and came together to become more unified and slowly in forcing down from the seven nations down to the three. And this all guy also helps her figure out, find out where her son is, Jim. And cause <laughs> she's just like, I'm here searching for somebody. And he's like, Oh, who? And she says, Jim, Jim. Or no, she's like, oh, he's a pri he's an elf priest, and he's just like an elf priest in the capital. And she's like, yeah, his name is Jim. He's just like, and everyone in the bars and and it's like, what? He, they're all like, how do you know him? He's my son. What? <laughs> just big question marks. So, as it comes out, all her children are fairly well known. Okay, right on. Um, and like in the second episode, so she meets this merchant. He agrees to give her a ride to the capital because she saved one of the soldiers who was protecting him and helped him out and whatnot. So they just give her a ride. She hangs out. She has a nice little moment with the little kid and everything about promising her to come back, giving her her first item she ever made and things like that. And the child just, she was like, you know, the silver tower out in the woods. Yeah. The evil witch. It's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl's just like, but you're not evil. <laughs> And everything and making a little promise with a girl. And then the rest of the episode takes part in the capital. And it's funny because she goes to the temple where her son, the uh, Jim is. And she's like, oh, I came to see Jim. And the one of the priests is like, do you have an appointment? No, I don't. It's like, well, we can't really just let anyone come to see him. It's like, oh, that's understand. I guess I shouldn't be trying to ease up on him when he's working. And she just sort of walks off and the priest is sort of just confused like, that was sort of weird. But she pieces out mm -hmm. and is walking around town and she just hears a loud voice and she's like, that voice sounds recognizable. Goes into a Dock harbor S building and she finds her dwarf son in there. Dwarf? Yeah, so okay. she, she has two elf children. One, one's the older Jim, uh, elf daughter, who's the headmaster of the academy. Call her and, Leah. That's the first thing that popped in my head. Okay. And then the dwarf, whose name is uh, Kadvos? Kadvos? Something like that? First thing that popped in my head was Chad. Okay. And it's funny because she sort of walks in and, and he's just, he sort of just turns around and sees her. He sort of squints. She says the name. He's just like, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> and she just face plants when he calls her that because she's just like, I wasn't expecting that, but I should have been. <laughs> and, like, he's this burly, tough... Dorf, he's 
commanding all these workers on this big old ship and all of them are just like did he just call her mom <laughs> <laughs> and she just comes over there he's like mom are you okay okay and she just gets up starts patting him on the head he's blessing it out all those guys are like what's happening <laughs> <laughs> And he's just like, stop patting my head. I'm not a child. <laughs> I love the accent you're throwing in with it. <laughs> but he doesn't really say it. He's just sort of like, he he's enjoys the daughter of his mother. And it has a nice little moment of her meeting her son after 200 years mm -hmm. and him sort of catching her up on, yeah, big brothers, big all high priests and whatnot. Sis is the head of the academy. She's like, you're going to become an adventurer? Yeah, I'm going to become an adventurer. They more or less, she's going to become an adventurer and everything. So they have their nice little moment. His entire crew's hiding behind boxes, just like. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> um, and she goes off to the Venture Guild. She signs up for that. And um, she just picks a random quest as they're trying to get her guild card. She's like, oh, if we need a potion. She's like. I got a potion. She goes to the desk as they give her a card. It's like, will this potion work for this qu for this question? And they're just like, yeah, it'll work. It seems awfully high quality. And she's like, oh, it's not a problem. I've had it for years. I'm not. I haven't used it. She's like, okay, take it. Pay her her two silver. Um, apparently, it's a request for the academy. So, come to find out, it ends up in the hands of her daughter, <laughs> or the hands of her daughter's husband. Actually, oh, okay. And everything. Then she carries on and runs into a weird night guy who winks very awkwardly <laughs> and a sorceress lady who are trying to find a child who it very heavily hints that he's the prince of the kingdom. But it's very funny because <laughs> uh, whenever they find him, he's trying to help a cat who's on a string and gets into trouble. She saves him with magic. And when he sees his sorceress teacher or whatever, he begins to run away. And the sorceress who's hired, um, I can't even remember our female lead's name, just like, don't stand there, catch him. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> so she literally, for the, most of the rest of the episode, chases the child and more or less just plays with him. Because <laughs> he's running and everything, and she's just sort of, da -dee -da -dee -da. <laughs> all this magic and whatnot. To the point, he's just he's just catching up to him constantly, and finally he get jumps in a boat. He's just like, rows out to the middle of the harbor. He's like, how do you like those apples? His eyes go wide. She's just walking on the water, <laughs> 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 and it just draws a whole big crowd of people, and they're all just watching the kid row real fast. And to the point where you see in the scene, she's chasing, and eventually she's just chilling on the stern, letting him row. <laughs> just watching him as he continues rowing around the boat, and she's just chilling on the stern of it. <laughs> To finally just catching him and tying him up. And they have a little moment. He's like, do you know who I am? She's like, you're primo. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was very, very obviously going to call you something, but I don't want to be involved, so you're primo from now on. <laughs> and he's just like, you see what you've caused? I'm now being called primo. And she does her whole thing, goes away. The end she's staying at celebrates with a bunch of non-humans because she made a big commotion at the harbor. And it has a nice little ending scene with her children talking. It's just like, yeah, so mom's in town. It's like, mom's are fine. fine. Yeah, she tried to visit you, big brother, but they wouldn't let her in. She's like, who didn't let in my mother? <laughs> They're going to be punished. Oh, it's one of those kind of characters. Yes. Okay. And the sister's just like, calm down. They don't know who she is. What do you expect? And she's <laughs> just like, oh, mother's in town? And that sort of explains why we got a random potion of such a high quality uh, made in a way that's not hasn't been used in centuries. <laughs> sort of realizing this, and they're just sort of, sort of like, what's going to happen? Because <laughs> even when she, uh, our MC was talking to her dwarf he, son, he's just like, so what you doing in town? And he's just like, oh, I'm going to be an adventurer. You're not going to attack anybody, are you? Because <laughs> so apparently when there was a game, she had a bit of a temper. <laughs> well... I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so overall, it sounds like you're really enjoying this. Yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. I mean, I, I don't get a chance to watch these series very often. so Because I, mean, I enjoyed episode one, personally. Yeah. I've enjoyed both episodes, so I'm probably going to very much enjoy this series. Okay. It's scheduled for 12 episodes. Uh, I do know that. You know, if you had to give it like a letter grade from what you've seen so far, where would, where would you kind of put this and how highly would you recommend someone checking it out? I would put it at a B so far. Okay. 
And I mean, if you're just looking for a slice of life, just no real edginess, dark concepts or anything, it's a I'd definitely pick it up. I, I think I gave it like a B minus or a B. I think is what I gave it. Yeah. You know, I, I felt pretty good about the first episode. I was just kind of, like I said, concerned. Like, are we going to explore what exactly happened? Uh, which, you know, I am still would still like to do. <laughs> I still would like to explore that. But uh, if we don't, you know, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. But I give it a B. I mean, I I personally enjoyed the first episode. I'm no, I'm, I'm now looking forward to watching the second because now I'm going to watch the second. And whenever I watch that dwarf, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fucking imagine you're I'm just gonna imagine you now with the accent. That's all that's all I'm gonna do now. <laughs> also, I want I want to also shout out. I loved how just like on the fly and just straight face, you just kept rolling with Jim like it was no problem. <laughs> I, I really like that. That's why I kept laughing over here. It's because of how smooth and easy it was.